You may think right now that if uh, the full-scale nuclear war happens, you're simply gonna commit suicide and you're not gonna suffer. However, majority of people, including most likely you, gonna try to survive. The survival instinct gonna take off and you will try to survive. The question is what if you do survive initial attack and initial fallout? What happens then with you? But the problem here is that simply there are gonna be many, many issues that you're gonna face and it's gonna be too late to be angry at yourself and it's gonna be too late to be angry at your own government for not preparing the country for the post full-fledged nuclear war situation. So what can we do as the citizens to prepare United States for the consequences of a full-fledged nuclear war and give a chance of survival for those who will survive? So we can do certain things. We can, for example, push the government to build more nuclear power plants. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? You're going to say, aren't the nuclear power plants part of the problem? Won't they simply be not turned off? And won't they add to the radiation and nuclear fallout? Not necessarily. It depends what kind of nuclear power plants we're going to build and how we're going to build them. So I do propose that we uh, focus on replacing all current nuclear power plants with SMRs, small modular reactors, which were very easy to shut off. Also, I propose that you do push, you write to your senators, your representatives, to construct those SMRs in such a way that the SMRs are constructed within a bunker that can withstand one direct nuclear attack, one attack by a single nucle nuclear warhead. Those could provide the power. What if we get into prolonged nuclear winter? We're gonna need power, we're gonna need artificial lights. And the way to get the artificial lights gonna be the SMRs hardened against a nuclear attack. That would help a lot. Also, they of course should have light bulbs stored in that bunker when the SMR is gonna be. And uh, that would help us. You're gonna say, what about uh, you know green energy? What about light? The sun not gonna be out. The sun gonna be gone. There may be even stronger winds, so the wind power may be useful. But most of the wind turbines gonna be destroyed in the process and all electric systems are gonna be fried. So besides making the SMRs resistant to a direct nuclear attack against the SMR facility, we would have to make them resistant to EMP attack, to electromagnetic pulse. The second thing that the government and the private industry can do for us is very simple, but it's very important. The thing that's gonna kill many Americans after the full-fledged nuclear war happens gonna be no medication for permanent and semi-permanent conditions. This is why it's important that you also write to your congressman, your senator, and you ask them, and also you write to the pharmaceutical companies so they can put lobbyists working for them over time. For people with permanent conditions, such as diabetes, one, or semi-permanent conditions, such as diabetes two, or people with mental conditions, or people with high blood pressure, which may be semi-permanent, they should be allowed to have up to one year of supplies of the medication, but that would have to be special medication. It should be medication that doesn't exist as of yet. Should be medication that has a long-term expiration date. It can stay good for, let's say, 50 years. 
And that stable medication, long-term stable medication, long-term expiration date medication can help many people with permanent conditions who would survive uh, the initial attack of the nuclear war to survive much longer and survive in much better health. So I know that uh, some people might not like the idea of people having extra medication, but you know, you can write a law around that medication. You can say that, for example, you know, uh, your long-term medication stash may be inspected on a random basis. You know, you may have to bring it to the, to the pharmacy with you and show to a federal agent once five years or something like that. So that's pretty much it. So those two things, you know, would help a lot. Having power after nuclear war, not having nuclear facilities adding to the suffering after nuclear war, but actually helping people after nuclear war and having people medicated at least for the first year before production of new medication may be restarted on a smaller scale. So that's pretty much all I have to say here. We cannot survive on our own, at least not in the quantities that are going to be min meaningful. We need help from the government and the industry. But the very important thing is that we ask for that help from the industry and the government. And, uh, you know, because we think that a nuclear war, full-fledged nuclear war is unthinkable, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen. It's better to be safe than sorry.